Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the MSI Clutch GM60 gaming mouse. MSI have taken a dive into some more premium gaming products, so when I was offered to check out the chance to have a look at one, I was definitely going to jump on board. Now one of the main selling points for me for the GM60 is actually the modular design that they offer. We've seen modular stuff from different companies over a number of years. Some do all the adjustments on the one thing. I didn't really like that idea at all. I think it looked horrible. Now the GM60 offers different interchangeable parts, which when I first saw the design of, I was really quite intrigued to try. As well as the modular design, it also features Mystic Lite RGB. So if you have other MSI products such as graphics cards, the keyboard, headsets, then you can actually sync those all together and then have custom light effects to go throughout the whole range of products you own, which is really quite cool. Also, if you prefer, they do a wireless version of this mouse as well, which is the GM70. Obviously, there's a slight difference in price, but should you prefer that wireless freedom, it is available to you as well. So some basic things to note, they're using a PMW3330 gaming sensor with a maximum sensitivity of 10,800 DPI. You've got eight customizable buttons as well. And the design of the mouse also allows you to use it left or right hand, which will be extremely helpful to some people. They're using on-run switches as well, which have a lifespan of over 50 million clicks. There's a few other cool features as well. Of course, I'll show you as we go along. So this is the box that the GM60 comes in. The GM70 has a slightly more premium box, but this one I'm assuming is going to go in retail stores. So it's got a bit more of an approach that the customer can see and try before they buy so i see what they've done it but personally for the price i'd like to see it in a more premium box so in the box we've obviously got the mouse itself the interchangeable modular parts which i'll show you in a moment an instruction guide as you'd expect then two two meter usb cables one of them is a very tight braid as well so you can't see any of the cables inside of it which is the kind of general approach you see with gaming mouses now more of a braided style but they also include a regular usb if you'd rather go with that one i suppose this is also good as a spare as well that's just a standard usb and then on the other end, it's a micro USB with a custom molding that's going to fit into the bottom of the mouse. I'll also show you that in a moment as well. So moving swiftly onto the mouse itself, let's run around all the different sizes and show you what it's got to offer. So the left hand side, we've got two buttons which are programmable to whatever you like, basically in the software. Then one of the modular sides as well, which I'll show you in a moment. Obviously, you can see the RGB as well. They've gone for like a sidebar rather than just, you know, a couple of lights, which I think is a lot nicer certainly gives you more customization available. We also see this kind of style RGB on the new graphics cards as well, certainly stepped up from what they've done before. The right hand side also offers two buttons as well, so if you want to use this left handed you can do, which is really good. It's rare to see a mouse that can be used for left handed people, so that is a good option there. The back we've got the Dragon logo which is also RGB, then an area just to put your thumb to take off the top cover of the mouse, then at the front the RGB that goes around where we plug our cable in, then obviously our scroll wheel. Beside the scroll wheel, there's a quick button to adjust the DPI on the fly. It comes preset with four different options, but you can customize that in the software as well. Not very much going on, on the bottom of the mouse, but you generally don't see much going on that anyway. Just the details about the mouse, obviously the sensor, then the little latch, which allows us to put our USB cable in and out. It's got a really good locking mechanism as well. So once you've plugged it in, it's definitely not going to come out by accident. Really nice, snug and secure fit. Okay, so moving on to the modular part of the mouse. These are different parts you get included in the box to customize the mouse to how you feel it works best for you. As you can see, you get two different thickness parts for the left and right side. I have heard people that have used gaming mouses that find their maybe little finger or their thumb often catches the surface that they're playing on. And that enables you obviously to have a little bit extra on the side of the mouse to stop that occurring. You also get another mouse cover as well. And you may think looking top down, it doesn't look much different, but one of them has a little bit more of a bump and one's a little bit smoother. It also peaks a little bit more in the middle as well. So that's primarily for changing about how you actually grip the mouse. Some people that use a grip type may want the one that's got a little bit more of a hump. And then obviously people that just use a flat palm grip may prefer using the slimmer one. The top piece clips in where the actual mouse hits the contact switch underneath, then just magnets at the back. Then the other pieces just go on with magnets as well onto some screw points on the mouse. But ever so easy to do, you can change the setup in seconds. I was personally just playing a game of Battlefield and then changing them every now and again just to see how I got on with it. But personally for me, I found the best combo to be the bigger side on the left, smaller side on the right, and then the flatter mouse top. That's what I found to be generally better for me. I did see an overall improvement in KD when I was using it after setting it up that way. I'll leave that there for now and obviously go into more depth in the conclusion. So going on to the Mystic Light software, Obviously, I've only got one MSI product actually installed at the moment, which is the one that's lit up, obviously the mouse. Once you have a couple of MSI devices, you can then go ahead and change the lighting options for every component in your computer that is obviously using the Mystic Light software. This will let you do things like you can have a continuous rainbow wave that will follow the line. So for example, once the blue is finished on the mouse, it will go to the next product and so on and so forth. Hopefully I can look at some more MSI products in the future. and I can give you a better demo of that. 
So the MSI Gaming Center is where we're going to get all our different controls and abilities to change the buttons on the mouse very easily. Just literally click on what button you want to change, then you get the different options come up. Personally for me, I like to use the ones on the left as volume up and down for multimedia. And then I've disabled the ones on the right just so I don't accidentally press anything. Now minus a few spelling errors, you can see that says volume up and down, the cyclic DPI couple of little errors there but obviously it's a new product for them to release as well so there will be a few little bugs in there you can add macros as well if you want to so just simply press new start and then just press whatever you want literally keyboard commands can go in there as well now having a guess it looks to be in chinese so obviously done a little bug they need to sort out there for the people that are downloading this in english on the sensor options you've got quick adjustments to change the dpi sensitivity i actually did change the default ones that were on there but i'll go into that in the conclusion can change the polling rate as well, snapping, scrolling, all the different things, lift off distances. You can really get fine precision control on your sensor if you want to. Personally for me, I just changed the DPI and that's about it. Now this is the color control center for the GM60 and they've got 10 different zones that you can light up individually with different colors or you can even just do them all at once with the LED sync button. Then you've got the 16.7 million colors to choose from so you can literally play with that until you find the exact color and pattern you like. They also offer some presets as well which is always nice. So let's take a look at some of the presets in action. Steady obviously does what it says, it stays like that. Breathing, again, breathes in and out. Active on touch, obviously when you press a button it's gonna light up. That's a pretty cool one actually. Also changing the Dragon logo independently as well, which is always quite nice. Color cycle, yet yeah, another one that's losing its name. Rainbow effects like we see on keyboards when it goes from left to right, but obviously this one's going to go around the side of the bar. Then the marquee effects basically go from left to right, right to left, front to back, just basically different patterns. Now one thing I did notice when using something like a steady color, if you're using say red and white as the example here, you can get them blend a little bit, so they do go a little bit pink. So I'd recommend using two, two of another color, two of one color, Kind of like that, so you don't get any blending of colour. Now those of you that watch my keyboard reviews, you know I like to mention the white. Being an RGB mouse, I don't see why I shouldn't touch on it here either. It does have a little bit of a green tinge to it. It's not quite as white as some other mice that I've seen. But as I also have said before, that you need to bear in mind, RGB needs to use three colours to try and produce white. So that's something more to note than to have a dig at. Okay, so we've gone over everything. I think it's time really now for the conclusion. So personally for me, I found that having these modular sides are oh, really great. As I said at the start, there are other mice out there that you can adjust everything on the mouse. And to me, that doesn't look very good at all. Looks just a little bit gimmicky as well, but this one is just really easy and simple to change. As I also mentioned, going through Battlefield and just changing bits on and off proved to be really good. It did take me a little bit of time, um, I will admit, to find you know my perfect balance and what I wanted on each side. I ended up with the longer side on the left, short side on the right, and then the flatter top plate as well. So overall, pretty good combination. I do find sometimes that my thumb does drag on the desk. That was obviously a great counter to that, just putting the longer part on. Also stuck with a static red as well, if you're wondering for the LEDs. In terms of gameplay, the DPI presets were way too high for me, even the first two levels. I don't know how all you millennials cope with that. That's just insane for me. So I went down, I dropped it down, I think, to 30 then 40 on the settings and then I left the last two as they were because I probably won't even touch in that area anyway. So I'm using one as a default for gaming and then the level two on the DPI quick adjust as my you know working kind of setting. Just a little bit more increase um, but it allows me to quickly go back down for gameplay just to get a bit more accuracy. But it does mean it does take me a time to turn around if an enemy is behind me but I'm willing to sacrifice that quick turning speed for better aim as well considering that I'm quite a bit of a noob so every little helps. This mouse, I think, would benefit from a mouse pad. I did find my desk now, just because it's had a massive battering over the years, where it's got a few nicks and stuff, the, the sensor did pick up on that. I would get a couple of sporadic jumps with my cursor every now and again, but that's purely down to the desk surface. Use a mouse mat, or if you've got a decent desk that's not beaten up like mine, you should have no worries at all. And although it's not its intended purpose, editing became a lot easier with this mouse for some reason. Generally when I review a mouse it's either leaning towards better for editing aka not a gaming mouse or a gaming mouse obviously is going to be better for gaming but not editing but this one's a really good match for both so I'm very surprised in that regard. This has actually replaced my daily driver which was an old Cooler Master one. I've kept that one for so long just because it's been comfortable. After spending a little bit of time getting to adjust to the MSI I definitely now prefer it over my old one. This is certainly a good dive into the more premium range of mice. If you don't know, they have done a few mice before, but they've been a bit more on the budget slash cheaper end. But for an attempt at a more premium mouse to match the competition, it's a really great effort. I'm looking forward to seeing what else they do with the Mystic Light when they've introduced a more range of peripherals to their range. 
and hopefully I can also show you guys that in the future as well. So thank you for watching this video guys, if you want to get yourself one I will put the links in the description box below. If you've got any questions please leave them in the comments box and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already please consider subscribing. A big thank you to MSI for sending this out for me to review and I'll see you all in the next one.